also like to thank the, the organizers for uh, inviting us, and you will see geographically how the Centers for Regenerative Medicine um, evolve as we go from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. And so we'll give you here a, an integrated example as Mayo Clinic is deployed actually across a number of states, but is um, primarily based uh, originally in Rochester, Minnesota, with uh, also significant presence in Florida and, and Arizona. And just to give you a context uh, in which this uh, effort has, um, has emerged, uh, Mayo will be celebrating soon uh, its 150th uh, anniversary, and this will be the official stamp that is being uh, put together for that event. And uh, as Mayo reflects essentially to the decades that have preceded, the, the effort has always been centered around the patient and identifying innovative ways to ensure um, new therapies and uh, manage patients in the most effective way. So in that context, the institution is looking into what will be the challenges that will be ahead of us as we look into the decades that is coming and, and showing another map of the world is a map of the world um, highlighting here in colors the various uh, aging uh, substructures as seen by the World Health Organization. So in blue you will see if we look today, the countries that have already 20% of their populations being 60 years of age or older, but if you fast forward uh, within a few next years, essentially the whole northern hemisphere will be in blue, including the United States. So one of the common challenge at a global scale is clearly the aging of the population. And with the aging of the population, there will be an increasing pandemic of what we call degenerative or chronic diseases, and that has been highlighted by the World Health Organization as the main challenge for healthcare delivery as we move forward. So as healthcare structures have been organized today, they have been focused very much on acute care. There is an increasing need to define management uh, ways that will affect actually the, the chronic way we we can address uh, chronic conditions. And in that context, regenerative medicine has emerged at the Mayo Clinic as the Mayo Clinic Board of Governors and Board of Trustees designated strategic initiative for this, for this decade. And it's integral to the Mayo Clinic operating plan, so it's very much into the texture right now of the institution. And it's organized as a catalyst, bringing new knowledge and ultimately ensuring that this new knowledge is delivered into safe and effective uh, care. It's uh, developed across the enterprise. It's from the very beginning multidisciplinary. And what is unique for this initiative, it's being championed from the very beginning, both by our clinical practice and, and research simultaneously. And it's, uh, it's an iterative cycle, as you can see uh, shown here in advancing the science in order to build new assets and ultimately add value uh, to the way we, we deliver care. So, so the primary objective for the institution is develop Mayo Clinic as a trusted destination for both regenerative medicine and regenerative surgery. So this is a snapshot where the institution sees the regenerative medicine effort. And there are various ways to, to describe what has been deployed. The, the centers has been in place now for a year. The upper part of this um, slide highlights what we call the regenerative blueprint, and it has been built or is being built across this knowledge to delivery paradigm and across three essentially uh, platforms the portfolios of discovery, translation, and ultimately application. So, this so called DTA model is the texture of the Regenerative Medicine Center and essentially is being deployed as portfolios or pipelines uh, across diseases. But what I will highlight for this audience is more the patient experience. In other words, how patients uh, do see regenerative medicine, at least in this initial 12 month. And there are three domains where regenerative medicine is being deployed uh, right now. One is a dedicated consult service. We call it the regenerative medicine consult service that I will describe in a second. And then from there, we move to regenerative medicine biotrust and ultimately the initial uh, successes of regenerative medicine procedure groups that have also been organized as a way to deliver regenerative medicine care. So this gives you 
um, a blueprint essentially what is being built. If we zoom in on the clinic itself, um, the clinic is essentially a portal where patients can come and it's a global structure where patients are coming uh, nationally, internationally and to receive primarily advice on their condition and then from this particular uh, initial contact they can be part of a regenerative medicine biotrust where their uh, tissues are then used to generate potential diagnostic and therapeutic products and this is powered essentially by the new science that is coming from, from the academic side of the institution, but also uh, very much driven by the clinical needs and essentially this collaborative uh, research practice uh, paradigm. And ultimately is to deliver very specific regenerative medicine procedural groups uh, that encompass multidisciplinary team in medicine and surgery. And, and the paradigm really is to move uh, medicine uh, and medical management, which is today very much focused on uh, addressing signs and symptoms of disease, increasingly to addressing the root cause of the problem and ultimately offering uh, curative or definitive solutions for, for our patients. So a little bit of highlight for the con consult service. As I mentioned, the, the center has started just uh, a few months back. We have seen so far uh, our initial pool of roughly 200 uh, patients and we have deployed this particular consult service in a centralized way through our transplant practice because transplant practice is one of the uh, essential practices uh, at the Mayo Clinic and, as a, and is multidisciplinary in nature uh, to start with. So it was a, an obvious starting point. And then from there, um, I think the key elements maybe from this slide is, is really to see as a regenerative medicine consult service as a single point of access for our patients and uh, ultimately a way for patients to uh, acquire new knowledge uh, uh, pertinent to their condition, but also for providers in addition to patients, uh, providers can uh, indeed uh, uh, use that point of reference. It allows us also to centralize the whole process of regenerative medicine flow within the institution. So if a phone call rings and somebody is asking about stem cells or regenerative medicine, we now have a dedicated pathway how ultimately they can reach specific consultation through the services, as you can see enumerated here, that we offer in our consult service. It's obviously also a portal for clinical trials in the regenerative medicine space and increasingly it has been used by other institutions as a point of reference as patients may be receiving regenerative procedures away from the Mayo Clinic, but their initial care and then follow-up care may happen specifically at Mayo. And we're in the process of scaling it up uh, as <coughs> other disciplines beyond the transplant center are interested. The second component, as I mentioned, from a patient experience is our regenerative medicine. Biotrust is being built in a way that we have other biobanks uh, throughout the institution being built for diagnostic purposes. This is a combination of diagnostic and therapeutic actually domain and we see it as a clinical support system, as a so-called theragnostics uh, clinical support system which will uh, inform uh, the, the, the way that a specific patient will be, will be treated. And you can see some numbers in terms of the scale up of this effort in terms of the specimens and patients uh, that will be part of this, uh, of this effort as it's being uh, built. And the third component of the, of the experience are the actual procedures. And I will highlight a couple of procedures. The first one, is an example uh, coming out of regenerative orthopedic surgery, which has been one of the uh, driver, and in general, the surgical practice has been one of the drivers of uh, regenerative medicine application. In specific, an example uh, where we're using this technique called minimal invasive hip decompression to uh, avoid actually traditional um, hip uh, replacement uh, in typically young patients. And here you can see some of the statistics in terms of how many we have done this year and the initial uh, success rate. In terms of um, a possible animation, let's see if we can have the next slide. You will see here uh, how this procedure uh, is being uh, deployed. The indication for this condition is something that we call a vascular necrosis of the hip. So this affects essentially 
the heap of patients, uh, let's say patients on cancer, uh, medication or on steroids can have their hip being destroyed uh, as a side effect of, of drug action. And so at point of care, bone marrow is isolated out of um, the patient um, uh, compartments uh, and then prepared uh, there within the surgical uh, suite in a relatively uh, simple extraction procedure. So this allows essentially an integration of care <coughs> without the need in this particular example for stem cells to leave essentially the surgical amphitheater and allowing a relatively crude but effective approach to uh, combining stem cell therapy as you will see in a second with uh, more advanced orthopedic uh, approaches and so the advanced orthopedic approaches here is the so-called um, minimal invasive decompression which is shown here and decompression is now um, unreached essentially through the injection of this bone marrow concentrate uh, which is rich in uh, reparative cells and the process is being uh, increasingly uh, improved as we go forward to understand what are the active ingredients uh, within the various stem cell populations that are injected and in the ultimate iteration of this procedure to be able to deliver maybe second generation products that have a higher even efficacy. But already in this uh, initial success rates as shown earlier is pretty high and it's at the 80% level and this being very young patients at the age of 20 to 30 typically, it gives them an opportunity to avoid uh, hip replacement at least initially. In general, uh, if we can go to the next slide please. <coughs> in general, the way we are deploying regenerative concepts is through this triad that we call the R-cube repair paradigm where on one hand we are increasingly understanding how our own body heals. So these are these concepts of rejuvenation and from understanding how our skin heals to our, how our liver can regrow all the way to organs that we thought to be terminally differentiated such as the heart or the brain understanding obviously the successes of organ transplant. So this combination of rejuvenative and replacement therapy is now being essentially built upon the next step, which is this regenerative effort, which we define as restoration of both function and structure as a goal of regenerative medicine. So if we um, have the next slide, please, you will see here an example of how this is being uh, now deployed in a more advanced uh, type of uh, uh, methodology. So this is uh, a case of uh, heart disease. So the first step is pretty uh, straightforward. This is this bone marrow harvest. The second uh, step is uh, separation, isolation of s cells from the bone marrow again, as shown in the previous slide, based on tremendous experience from bone marrow stem cell transplants and hematology. But increasingly, these initial uh, steps of purifications are being uh, uh, enhanced. And this is an example in step three, where we have spent a significant time in understanding how to lineage specify stem cells. So in this case, rather than randomly injecting stem cells, we ensure that these stem cells are guided to acquire, in this particular example, a procardiogenic state as a way to enhance both safety but ultimately efficacy of this uh, treatment. So this is already a second generation type of uh, regenerative procedures where stem cells are being informed based on the understanding of developmental biology and embryology, how ultimately to uh, make them as effective as possible. And then we are also very much relying on advances in delivery procedures here, for example, an invasive approach where we map, first of all, the prior infarct location. And once we have mapped it, we, in this particular trial, we avoided injection into the scar. The scar is, as you can see, much thinner than the rest of the, of the wall. And so we eject around the scar, covering as many uh, areas as possible to deliver the desired dose. Uh, and these particular cells uh, represent, as I mentioned, the first clinical trial actually with lineage-specified stem cells called the CQ trial that was just uh, completed. 
and there are various techniques that are then available uh, for follow-up such as echocardiography and many others. We can go to the next slide. One uh, essential element, if we can uh, just skip to the next slide. One of the essential elements of the regenerative medicine effort at Mayo is to ensure that experiences, let's say, in one domain are increasingly being uh, developed across domains. And here you can see a list of ongoing or clinical trials that are about to start in the regenerative space. And they are, for now, significantly clustered in the cardiology, neurology, and orthopedic field, but soon they will be expanding uh, beyond those, those fields. And as you can see, both in adult medicine, but also for congenital uh, disorders as well. If we go to the next slide. Um, the next step for, for us is to ensure that beyond this uh, initial discovery innovation effort, there is also the critical step of standardization. So in order for these uh, therapies to ultimately be implemented in practice, it's absolutely critical to ensure that we are selecting properly the patients, ensuring that we have the safest and most effective biotherapeutic that we're using, and ultimately ensuring that our delivery of these regenerative procedures is done in the most uh, effective and optimal way. And this uh, effort of standardization is really carried throughout the Mayo Clinic enterprise. And here you can see uh, both um, highlighted the, the, the Rochester um, uh, sites, but also the Florida and Arizona sites here represented by the directors, respectively, Drs. Gondwa and, and Rakila, who lead the effort um, to ensure the standardization around the, the three sites. What is critical for the Mayo Clinic is also building this community of practice beyond the Mayo Clinic. And in the audience, I can see representatives of institutions with which Mayo is building a regenerative medicine community of practice, in particular in Galway, in, in Ireland, and also in Karolinska, in uh, Stockholm, in Sweden, among others. And this is the last slide uh, just to highlight uh, the three domains that the Mayo Clinic Board of Governors uh, has selected as a three priorities for the institution in this decade. And regenerative medicine is part of this triad together with individualized medicine and the science of health care delivery. And the order is pretty tall, is through these three initiatives to ensure an informed way of advancing health care into the future. Thank you.